They will be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet. Kind of cool, right? Well, anyway, uh, tomorrow's the launch of Live 9, and with it is going to be the launch of Max for Live 6.1. Uh, it has 64-bit support and all sorts of great new devices, and it's also bundled with Live Suite, which is very exciting because that many more people are going to be able to use all these cool devices and the stuff that we're working on here. So hopefully we have a bigger audience uh, as of tomorrow. Wanted to go into something really interesting and really useful and kind of convince uh, everybody out there that uh, programming in Max for Live is, is cool and will make you a more popular person and attractive to everyone as a whole and stronger, faster, and all that kind of great stuff. So we're going to look at two types of modulation and uh, different from the WUB modulation of filters that you can see a lot. We're going to talk about old school ring modulation and frequency modulation what those two really are and what you can do with them. Now, what you heard here, I'm going to play it again. They will be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet. That cool sci-fi effect. Uh, if you're a Doctor Who fan, uh, uh, you've heard the, the voice of the Daleks, you know, those, those uh, robots that run around trying to exterminate everybody. That, uh, that voice was created back in the 60s using the same technique. It was an analog circuit, though. It was a, a ring of uh, diodes, which is why they call it ring modulation. But anyway, what it is is basically you take two signals. You take a sine wave and your audio signal, and you multiply the two of them together. You multiply the signal by the, uh, the sine wave. And... Uh, it's, uh, let's see, I have a little demonstration here, which is based on the ring mod uh, device that comes with Max for Live. So I've got, uh, instead of the audio that comes in, I'm going to put in a sine wave so we can kind of hear what's going on. Okay, hear that sine wave there? All right. So I will lock this device right now. And uh, let's bring in a sine wave. And you can kind of hear it. It's pretty low right now. Okay. And we are then going to modulate the amplitude, which makes a tremolo type of sound. Okay. drowning myself out so you'd hopefully you can still hear me um, so that's amplitude modulation or ring modulation in this case right we're modulating the amplitude of this one sound source with another or it's just uh, in, in max terms let's look here a cycle creates a sine wave so you see the sine wave here and you can see I'm changing the frequency of it and then at signal rate it comes out here and multiplies it uh, with the other right here. This is my sound source over here, right? There's my sound source. Got some aliasing a little bit. This is not uh, the greatest example, but so it's close enough. So I have a, a simple sine wave here, and it gets multiplied by this other one. So again, you hear that amplitude going up and down, that tremolo. It gets those great overtones as it goes up higher. Okay, now, you've also heard of FM. Now, what is FM doing? FM is modulating the frequency of a sound as opposed to the amplitude. So I have another uh, cycle here, and I'm using this cycle to control the frequency of the other cycle, right? So as this one goes up and down, you'll hear a different effect. Okay, it's a vibrato. The frequency is now going up and down according to this. You see, as the higher it goes, Once you get into audio rate, it really sounds like something is, uh, is happening. I'm bringing this down a little bit. So you get, again, a lot of overtones. It uh, becomes a really interesting sound. And you can use the two together. Get these real gritty, nasty sounds. 
So that's a real simple introduction to ring modulation or amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Now this of course I'm just using real simple uh, excuse me, real simple knobs or dials, live dials in here to control things. Ultimately, you can use envelope sources and, and modulators and LFOs, all this sort of thing. Uh, there's also some, I'm gonna, let's turn this off. Oh, that one, yep. Okay, so I'm turning that off. I have my other ring modulator here. We can hear our voice again here. They will be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet. Okay. And built into Max for Live now, there's even a bunch of different types of ring modulators. You have an auto ring modulator, which is kind of cool. It's the most advanced one, which will have a uh, an envelope follower built into it. Check this one out, ready? They will be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet. All right, let's loop that. So we hear it over and over again. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. I'll turn on the Along envelope with everything follower. Else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet. So the envelope follower is doing is following the amplitude of the incoming signal and using that to change the frequency of the modulator. So you get this sweeps up and down in the frequency. It gets even more interesting. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. So it's all about creating additional harmonic grit, uh, harmonic interest uh, in uh, the sound there. So it gives you all kinds of uh, ways to take a simple waveform and mess it up, muck it up, and then uh, you know take it to different places from there. So let's see what else can we do. I'm going to grab an audio effect here. I'm dying to hear what this sounds like. We use our favorite, our Redux on here. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Redux is a bit reducer or sample rate reducer. Use it with a lot of cool effects. Be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead cool, soon right? enough. Now let's go Skrillex on it here, right? Let's put in a auto filter. Let's see what happens to that. Give it a little bit, of, a little bit of this. Just a little bit of that. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet, they will be dead soon enough. All right, so that's uh, mixing our Max for Live uh, auto ring mod here, along with the auto filter and then some bit reduction. Um, gives us some of that really fun grittiness and uh, animation to our sound. Anyway, hopefully this has been a, a nice introduction for you guys and another reason to think about upgrading to Live 9 Suite, especially because it has uh, Max for Live included in there, which is a pretty awesome deal. So until next time, this is Eric at Learn Max. Uh, uh, check out my new web page, uh, EraserMice. Dot com. Uh, if you want to find out more about the different devices I make here, more tutorials, and even pick up the now famous floating window Max for Live devices. That's right. If you have Max for Live, you can use uh, multiple windows in, in uh, Ableton. Uh, and you heard it here first and saw it here first. Uh, so it's very exciting stuff. Okay, take care and happy Live 9 birthday. Be dead soon enough, along with everything else on this planet.